Yeah, we're ready. Okay, go for it. Do do your uh, screen share. Okay, let me share my screen. All right. Everyone see it okay? I see it. Looking right. good. Okay, great. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for giving us the time of your day today. Uh, I'm Rick Pinkerman, the CEO and founder of Notice Ninja. There's a major problem going on right now that our companies are facing, and it's only getting bigger. Companies are currently buried under 200 billion in tax penalty and tax compliance notifications every year. What are we doing about that? Our SaaS-based software saves companies millions. In essence, we rescue companies from penalty hell. So what is penalty hell? Well, most companies or people don't know this, but there's over 89,000 local governments currently in the US and that's growing. These, these agencies are overwhelming the companies with millions of paper notices each and every year, trying to one, generate tax revenue and two, keep everyone in compliance. Most companies are using Excel, which we just talked about some major problems with Excel. Thanks for that, Nicholas, um, <laughs> to manage these processes, which obviously we know that it, there's, you know, it's error prone, it's inefficient, um, there's, there's security issues, there's just a lot of different issues with managing it that way. That's 90% of how our clients come from. The CFOs and the head of tax and compliance, they're really worried about getting in front of the notice, the avalanche of notices. They know that's, that's coming out with all these regulation changes um, and you know, keeping their jobs at the same time. We had one client that la lost their head of compliance and had over 2000 notices jammed in one of their uh, drawers that were just basically backdated. Um, that was very costly to that company. And, and these are companies that we're dealing with. They're all Fortune 1000 companies, uh, very large companies and or service providers. Let me tell you why I'm really excited about our team of diverse team of highly respected industry experts. Amanda is our founder, CFO, and life partner for the last 20 years. What a partnership it's been. She has over a decade's worth of experience working in and around the technology and compliance industry. Around the office, Amanda keeps the trains running on time. Robert Kramars is our board of advisors and our acting CFO. Rob wears many hats to help us guide us into profitability. We've been working with Rob and George Kinney from the Center for Strategic Management to help us prepare to ensure we're making the best decisions with the resources that we currently have. Dominic, he is our technology specialist and expert. He's make sure that our product is scalable and secure. Myself, I've been in and around the technology and tax industry for over 25 years. It's not my first rodeo. I sold my last payroll company to CBiz for a 3X multiplier. They even actually kept my office and my staff as their West Coast Processing Center. I'm gonna turn it over to Amanda and she's gonna tell you a little bit about our advisory board and a few stories about our current customers. Thanks, Rick. So who else is on our team that's gonna increase the value of your investment? Well, we've assembled a group of industry insiders and subject matter experts to assist in quickly scaling. Martin Armstrong here, he's the vice president of uh, shared payroll services at Charter Communications. He's a current client of ours. He's been a client for several years. He's a member of the advisory council for the IRS, and he's an integral part of the American Payroll Association, which is an important association for our pipeline. Jack Nolan is the vice president of business development over at CIC Plus. They service the majority of Fortune 1000 companies in the US. We refer, we refer to Jack as our rainmaker because he's always sending business over. In fact, he's so excited about our software, he's an investor. George Kenny is the co-founder the, for the, um, the Center for Strategic Management. Uh, he's an extraordinary individual with an extraordinary career with incredible business knowledge. He is helping us with mitigating our risks and he brings years of wisdom and is advising us to scale to a gazelle. I wanna tell you about one of our happy customers, Entertainment Partners. Rebecca Harshberger here, she's the Vice President of Payroll Tax. Her department was overrun by paperwork. In fact, they were buried in notices because their processes were inefficient and error prone. 
They had millions in penalties and fees that were accruing interest daily. Rebecca did a quick internet search and found our software solution. She was able to license it the same day. We were able to help her standardize their tasks and streamline their processes. And if you ask Rebecca, she'll tell you that we killed the notice beast. So how does Notice Ninja work? What do we do? Well, we're a CRM application for tax professionals. Currently 90% of our prospects come from manual processes and Excel spreadsheets, which are cumbersome and error prone. Notice Ninja automates the process of receiving, researching, responding to, and closing a notice. Nicola here is the senior compliance manager over at Trinet. In January of 2019, they received roughly 40,000 notices. It took them 45 people six weeks to enter all those notices into Excel spreadsheets where they had very little oversight. With the help of our software and o, um, key OCR algorithms in January of 2020, it took them three weeks to upload those 40,000 notices with just three people and they had complete oversight on all the processes. If you ask Nicola, she'll tell you that our process is magical. So we have a lot of happy customers. And what we have, uh, we've gained good market traction with known corporations like Honeywell, L Brands, and Cognizant, which further legitimizes the need for our software solution. Some of these clients have been with us for close to a decade now. Azure Software here is a client of ours who's purchased at least six of our smaller clients, but as they grow, their usage of our software increases as well as their fees. We have a reoccurring subscription model, uh, subscription based model. And Rick's going to tell you a little bit about our finances here and what we're doing to raise money. Thanks, Amanda. Well, let's get down to it. Is the market big enough and exciting enough to warrant your investment consideration? The $1.4 billion SAM includes our three beachhead markets. The SAM has roughly 190,000 possible prospects across America that we've identified and selected in our current markets. I'll go into that more detail in a few minutes. Well, we'll go after the TAM at the end of year two as we scale out to the solution into all markets in the US and abroad. Our target market share in year five is roughly 4,500 clients are roughly 3% of the TAM. So who are the players in the marketplace and what are we worried about? Here you'll see a list of the competitors on the left the two most important items for our clients or what they want is a complete and automated solution. Um, so you can see the only software that we're the only ones that are kind of focused in that area uh, where we have compliance and automation for all agencies for all regions. Here is a different look at the competitors. And this is the same data as the last slide. It's just you can see the access in this chart is the complete solution and automated and simple solution. Most companies use manual processes like Emmanuel was saying, or CRM or Excel. Some clients use a ticketing system, which they have to totally customize and it has limitations because they try to do it for everything. Um, most of the people that we get or most of our clients, we take them from using several systems or manual processes to managing everything into one system as ours. So where are we going to invest your money? Amanda is going to review our beachhead markets and our strategy that we're using. Thanks, Rick. I still on mute. So there's dozens of markets that need Notice Ninja, but we're here to tell you that we have done our homework and we're going to go after the low-lying fruit. We have this heat map here where obviously the green is rising to the top. On the left over here, we're showing you a few of the markets that we've considered, although there are considerably more markets than we have listed here. Uh, the top bar are the criteria with which we have measured these markets, and the two most important criteria being a quick sales cycle and the ability to pay. So these first three selected markets on the top are our beachhead markets and what we consider to be our low-lying fruit, and these are payroll service providers, large corporations, and CPA firms. So how are we going to penetrate the market? Well, we have five different approaches. Uh, we have client referrals, which are a great source of prospects for us. In fact, our clients sell the product for us. 
We have automatic vir virility, which is happening with other departments. As we go into one department, we move across the company and go wide. Uh, we also have employees that have been using our system and that move companies and take us with them. For example, Greg Reddick was working on our system at Heartland. And when he moved over to Kronos, he took our system with him. <laughs> Uh, we've also been attending virtual conferences, which are, are different than the in-person conferences, but we're getting more detailed information about these prospects than we have ever received. So we're very excited about that. So how do we keep our competitors from eating our lunch? Well, we're the only ones focusing on tax departments. Other CRM applications are for sales departments like Salesforce which works great for some, but it doesn't have the feature rich system that tax professionals require to do their job. We understand the market thoroughly. We have had 10 years of R&D working with those who do the work and learning the workflows and the processes. And we have a st sticky product. Once we get in, we like to go wide across the company. Rick is gonna go over the financials of the company with you. Oh, you're on mute, Rick. Thanks, Amanda, <laughs> for both that. Um, how do we know that we have a good business model? Every business has a cash machine. Uh, some are weak and some are strong. A good measure of the health of a company's cash machine is their LTV over COCA ratio. I'm here to tell you that we have a very strong LTV COCA ratio of a 5X. And what that means is for every dollar invested in our cash machine, we're gonna return a $5. That ratio is gonna drive a healthy exit and make our investors happy come year five. It should be no surprise though, to do all of this, we're gonna need some capital. So how much money are we raising and what are we going to accomplish with your investment? We're currently raising 5.5 million in two rounds. Our first round is a convertible note of 1.5 million. That's going to allow us to penetrate our beachhead markets and become cash flow positive by Q6. Our second round is around Series A of 4 million, which will allow us to target additional markets and scale out into other countries as well. We'll be spending most of the convertible debt on marketing and operations, basically scaling out the product that we currently have. So is our investment exciting enough? Here's our five-year plan with revenue and EBITDA. The most important thing for an investor to see here is that we're going to scale over $100 million by year five, which is going to facilitate a great exit for us all. As you can see, in year three, depending on the board and the decision that we make, we may scale out to other markets and turn the fire on the growth and um, uh, integrations. Now, as you can see, is in the year three, we're going to do some major investments to truly go after all markets. Um, so most inv investors invested in a company that has ran out of cash. Let me show you or tell you how we're not going to run out of cash. We plan for it. This is our quarterly performa with revenue, EBITDA, and cash represented. The most important is the black line and the two calf troughs in Q4 and Q12. As I've said, we're raising 5.5 million, a convertible, a convertible node in a Series A. So are we raising enough cash? The question is yes, we've given ourselves significant coverage and the margins so our projected negative cash will not cause us to run out of money. As you can see in the 700,000K dip in year one, and the $2.7 million dip in year two gives us close to a two to one coverage margin that we'll have. So you know, we've calculated our minimum cash requirements and we've given ourselves the margins needed. So we know exactly when our worst case cash scenario will happen and we've created the funding plan to take into account both dips. <coughs> so who is going to buy us and why? There's a lot of possible suitors. Uh, once we do our integration, We've got like international service firms that like Fiducial, they have come into the US market recently and they're trying to sell their products and services to these large companies. Our client base would be a perfect fit for a company like that or others to upsell their clients uh, products too. Uh, we talked to ADP early on about an early um, acquisition. I talked to Brian Sterner, Steiner, the senior director of product management 
Um, they just didn't give us any kind of value at the time because we were a startup, but they were really interested in the product and said, once we had a SaaS based solution that was scalable, definitely give them a call. So once we integrate the system to all agencies here in the US and for all of our international clients, and um, there'll be a lot of suitors for our, our company and our product. Amanda is gonna tell you why now. So why is this investment timely? What's so compelling? Well, timing is everything. And currently there's a convergence of several powerful waves from tax changes taking place all over the nation to the coronavirus, to the move to a Zoom economy. And there's an avalanche of paper that's coming. The need to automate tax notice management and administration has never been greater. There's a huge and growing enterprise market. We have a burning problem that has to be addressed. We have a complete and winning team. We have a reoccurring revenue model. In fact, we're already in revenue. We have a high SaaS margins, a defensible moat. We're intrinsically viral. We have a clear path to exit and the timing is perfect. We are Amanda and Rick from Notice Ninja. Thank you for your time and we're open to any questions that you might have. Good presentation. Yeah, good job. Why don't you take off the screen share. Um, Thank you. Good, good job presenting. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Hi, this is David. You mentioned uh, AI as a component. How does that work? And in terms of adding the notices from 89,000 different entities that are generating them, how reusable is it possible to enter those notices in your system and then make available to any of the clients who happen to be impacted by them? Uh, yes, I'll take that answer. Yes. Um, so that's part of our system is we have our own OCR algorithms. And that's basically how we capture data into the system. Um, right now, we have AI that we're built in there to be able to recognize the attributes for every single agency notification from the US and any country in the world right now. We currently have over five clients that are managing notifications from eight to uh, eight, eight different countries. So we, that's where our, our AI comes in is really the data recognition from a PDF um, document. 99% of every single notification comes in as a paper document and then it gets converted to a PDF usually. So, but I, so I think he's also asking about our library of information. And so, yeah, as those notices are scanned in, we are creating a library and our system is organizing them. And then we'll be able to identify what kind of notice you got and then what your corrective action is. So then the AI also comes in, it's gonna be able to predict what your future uh, actions are gonna be. And it's gonna help you create those, uh, that research is going to pop in. Those letters that you're sending directly to the agencies are all built into the system. So we kind of we call it a CRM, but it's we, it may be more of an ARM, which is an agency relationship management system. Thanks. Yes. Yes. We do have a library right now, and currently in our current system, each client builds their own because we've got a client that just does oil and gas pipeline regulation notifications. So they've built their own and then they go in there and configure the forms that they get and the data that they wanna capture off those forms. So once we, we have it on our uh, SaaS based solution that we're building out the, um, the OSR, the, um, the new program for the um, OCR um, through AWS using the Elastic Beanstalk app, AWS you know, S3 buckets, you know, all of the enterprise stuff. So, cause we're gonna license that technology out to clients that don't even use our product. Companies that manage notifications and thousands of them, they're gonna be able to use that one little plugin and plug it into their application that they use to manage their data. So, but right now we have it plugged into our system and a, a standalone. But if a client has already like the oil and gas uh, uh, companies, if they've already configured the forms to get the data off them. Is there a way to share that between your clients or is that considered con con confidential? 
No, so the, so all of those information is going to be preloaded in the system. Um, we're going to be able to data mine that because every form that the agencies currently send out are published uh, on their websites, or if not, they're, they're non-published information that you can request. Right now, we've got a roughly 80% of every form that all of our clients currently use. Um, and that just means that we don't have the ones that aren't published or the ones that are just really awkward. With our SaaS-based solution, which is Notice Ninja, one client puts it in or the, the agency puts it out on the web, we're going to data mine that, capture it, and bring it in, and every client will have that option. Or one user will get that, that notification, that weird thing that, you know, you get one every 150,000 notices. They're going to enter it, and it will be there for everyone else. So our clients build the content, basically. I, I have a question. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so two, two questions. One is, um, wh what do you charge your clients, right? As, you know, what's the, on the SaaS-based model? What is that? What's the pricing? Mm -hmm. And then the second question is, um, what are the valuations on, on the two raises? Uh, okay, first question is on the, uh, so we have basically setup fees that range from anywhere from $5,000 to $20,000, depending on the size and complexity and um, of the client. And then we have a reoccurring fee. It's the minimum starts at $500 per month. <clears throat> we, we bill it annual. Um, and that's for four users. And then it's $75 or roughly 900 roughly dollars per user per year, if they add any new users. We also um, charge uh, transactional fees. We can automate some of our service providers power of attorney management systems through DocuSign and managing those. And we charge at $2.50 per W-2 that they manage as well through our system. Some of our clients manage over 100, 200,000 W-2s every year. And those are our large service providers. There's other documents as well and other workflows that we actually charge a, a transactional fee for. Those are for our service providers. Uh, amended return is one of them. So we have a, a couple different products right now that we, we, we charge for. So it's a reoccurring, it's a setup, setup fee, and then a per, a per, per transaction fee. Um, and then I think you asked on the valuations. So on the first raise, the convertible note that we're doing, I believe there's a cap of 5 million. And then we believe our uh, pre-money valuation, or we've estimated our pre-money valuation on the Series A to be anywhere between 16 and 22 million. Is that correct, Rick? Yeah, on the Series A. Yeah, we're not going to evaluate until <laughs> Series, real true value is not until Series A. Rick, how, how long have you guys been doing this? Uh, we've been doing it now 10 years, a little over 10 years. And, and why are you raising money at this stage? Uh, we well, we currently have an installed on-prem application for our clients, and we've been using that. Uh, when we first started out, we well, we sold our payroll company in 2007 to CBiz. Uh, we had roughly 20, uh, 2,400 clients. Um, one of the applications that I developed was a, a notice tracking system, um, and I had four people in my tax department at the time. When we sold to CBiz, they got rid of the application and hired seven full-time people to manage that function. Um, and that's when I basically stepped out and said, okay, well, I was a partner in the company when we sold, I became the VP of operations, I stepped out and started this company. Uh, our first comp our first client, well, they weren't our first user, but our first client was like Wells Fargo, and then we had Paylocity, we got a whole really big companies come to us. So basically, we just, uh, my wife and I stayed back and said, hey, let's see what kind of service that they need. We basically managed one type of uh, operation before, and now, which was just notices, and now we manage, there's roughly seven different main modules within our system that our clients use to manage the compliance regarding notifications. Um, if you have a notification, you have to have a power of attorney. If you have to get a notification, sometimes you have to do admitted returns. Um, our clients have to go in and out of different agencies. They have to do enrollments and unenrollments. There's a lot of workflows that are manual processes in the back office tax department that we're manually or we're automating through our system. So what we've done is it was a custom system with like say 20 different screens. Notice Ninja is a true workflow task-based system that customizes the workflow based on the notice type and agency it's received from. So it's very quick and simple to use. And our clients that, you know, bring on 20, 30 people each quarter, it's really simple for them to train. 
Have you tried to raise money in the past? No, we've self-funded everything. This is a pivot that we're doing going to a SaaS based model. We see an opportunity for a global market. The TAM that he showed you, the 6.7 billion, is just a US TAM. That is not a global TAM. The numbers are extraordinary because this is a, an area that has a huge need in it. And so we're meeting that need with that SaaS based product. We've also seen that all notices come in paper form primarily, unless you're part of the IRS bed program, you'll get maybe large data files. But now that you've moved to the Zoom economy and you have a lot of people working remotely, and we really don't see that ending anytime in the future, you need those notices now to be um, routed to the right people in the right departments. And so with um, large service providers, we get a huge volume, but in corporations, we're finding that multiple departments have notices. And so we're able to automatically route that notice once it's entered to the correct department. So the right person's getting the work. And that's even more important now that we're at that Zoom economy, right? And if you consider that interest is accruing at 1% per day, when we had brought on entertainment partners, they have $23 million in fines. Uh, it's tremendous and it really can be huge to your bottom line. You, you may have answered this question, but how is this business model different than the previous business model in a way that you didn't have to raise money before, but now you have to raise money? Sure. So the last model, we were just at the payroll service providers. We owned and operated a payroll company. So that was the type of payroll notifications that we understood. That was our first five, six years of operation. Mm -hmm. uh, we pivoted really about three and a half years ago to take up uh, corporate, you know, large corporations. Um, and that was really when we met Jack from CIC Plus. And he said, hey, Rick, Amanda, I'll introduce you to my clients as long as you'll increase your setup fee by, let's say, 500% and your monthly fee by about the same fee. He's like, because I love your product. I think it's great, but my clients are all are enterprise and they won't even touch you if you don't at least charge 10, 15,000 for setup. So we did that. He introduced us to three clients. We sold all three of them. And we're like, wait a second. You know, our profit margin is way higher. Our, our actual sales time is slower than the service providers because these guys are we're coming in as a, as a single department. And then we go in and then we go wide. They're like, oh, well, sales and use sees the, the, the tax department, or the payroll department's using it. And they're like, we want to use that product. We, you know, we're using Excel. We're losing stuff. We don't know what things are at. So we start going wider and wider. So that's why we're pivoting here. There's a huge opportunity. I was just at the webinar on Friday with Ernest and Young talking about the changes because of what the uh, current uh, election is going to hold and talking about possible changes to the tax code and compliance. And well, I'll tell you, everyone at Ernest and Young is really happy about having you know, a job and there's no time soon that's going to go away because it, it is going to, our clients are going to triple, quadruple the notifications that they're going to deal with. I, I missed something in the logic there. I mean, I, 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 I know I didn't hear right, but, but what I heard was, well, before we were doing this service business, we could grow it organically. We didn't have to raise capital. And then these big guys came along and told us to multiply our fees by four or five times. So now we have to raise money. I think that it was more that we um, were doing research and development. We were truly understanding the market. We see that there's a huge opportunity and we've decided to pivot. Um, and we created Notice Ninja Inc. as a new corporation formed out of Delaware in June. And we feel that there's a huge opportunity to go after this gigantic market that's screaming for somebody. So we've created the solution. We uh, Jack came in and funded the rest of our development of our system. So what we're looking now to do with the million five raise is to simply scale and, and go big, go fast. And so this is money to put into marketing and sales departments primarily. So, uh, this so, is different than what we were doing before. Yeah, 100% different. But after 10 years, we see now that, there, that there's a need for this product in the market. We were kind of 10 years ahead of the market, I'd say. People were kind of not really wanting to. We're, we don't get tax notices or we don't, you know. And so now it's obvious everybody gets tax notices. And now we're digitizing that. And the market's caught up with us. And they're ready to go to a virtual environment and do that. So, so if you say it in terms of risk, if you went through the list, list of all the risks that uh, investors have to take in a startup, you would say, well, we've proved the concept, we've got it out there, we've got happy customers, uh, we've shown what we can do. We've basically taken all the risk out except scale up. And that's what we're having to raise money for. We're, we're raising Correct. money. 
That's so we, why we, brought George, we brought George and Rob in to help us mitigate that risk and understand how to scale a company appropriately to take it to a series A raise and then an exit. Yeah, that's it. Um, my mind does a backflip when you say series A. Um, to me, series A comes pretty early in the process. I mean, this isn't exactly early. Uh, I guess you can call it whatever you want, but uh, it's not clear to me that this is a series A. No, this isn't a series A. Right now we're raising fun, an angel fund round, a million yeah. five in, um, from angel investors. And then our intention is by Q, between Q9 and Q12, to do a series A raise. So what I was explaining is we brought in risk advisors to help us mitigate any risk that an angel investor would have in the company. In addition to create trust in the relationship that we are trying, you know, we're looking at all aspects to mitigate. And, and what, what's, the, what's the deal structure? What's the difference between this round and series A? So this, Rick, do you want to talk to that? Or maybe Rob can help us with that because Rob is, he's my advisor and he's here. Well, I mean, the, the convertible note right now is uh, the, the terms on it um, are, you know, three year max with a, you know, a, a interest rate, but it's a, for a convertible and our expectation is convert it in Q12, anywhere from like Q8 to Q12. Have you, have you talked to anybody at Tech Coast Angels about your deal? Yes, we have talked to Tech Coast Angels. Um, I was working with Sandra and we actually are presenting to the Titan Angels group in December. Um, and then I just have to go through the process of reapplying to um, Tech Coast Angels. When we did it a year ago, we were in a different place. Um, so now we have a, a different presentation and we'll mm -hmm. fill that out. But I, I mean, yeah, I, I, they're on our list. Well, let me we give you some food that. for thought about the, that deal structure. I know it's a common deal structure. Um, Volker has told me that the Tech Coast Angels won't do convertible note. Um, I think they have in the past, but he, he told me a month ago that, that they are no longer doing that. And here, here's a, just here's my investor perspective on convertible notes and the problem with a convertible note. Um, you're basically asking me to take seed level risk um, for an A level equity position. And, and for me as an investor, that's really not fair. I mean, yeah, you're giving me a little bit of discount, but I wanna come in the seed round and help you really build your company and go out and raise series A at four times the price of the seed round. So you're saying you want to come in for an equity position as opposed to a commercial? I would, I, I would much rather do a straight equity deal. Um, and that's why, that's why I was a little confused about Series A. I'd rather do Series A now, you know, do straight equity, Series A, and then okay. uh, later go for Series B. That's so, perfectly, I, I, Rick and I are flexible to anything. Well, um, have, you may want to have that conversation with the Tech Coast Angels. I mean, and he led me to understand that a lot of the angel groups are having taking that same uh, position. The, the, the convertible, think about it the way I said it. With a convertible note, you're basically asking me to take seed level risk, um, but I'm only getting uh, an A-level valuation. I mean, you know, just make up be the numbers. Maybe the valuation should be... Um, Two million now and eight million later, you know. But you're asking me to come in now at eight million less twenty percent. I mean, that that doesn't compensate me for my risk. Rick and Amanda, can I answer that question real quick? Please. Yes. Uh, Fred, um, they're capping at five million, but the Series A will most likely be fifteen to twenty valuation. I mean, so you cannot get hurt by that. It's not just eighty percent of of current valuations, it, the worst that it could be for you is about a four times growth of, in the next year, 4X. Well, um, work it through with the, the angels. I, I, I understand what you're saying. It, it's a tricky equation. Right. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the con convert, when you say convertible note, are you talking about a safe or a conventional convertible note? Conventional. 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 Um, the, the, the reason the safe was invented was to plug up a hole in the conventional. Uh, conventional is okay. I mean, it's straightforward. 
if you really spell out what happens in the event that the company does not raise the Series A by the specified date. The problem with most convertible notes is they either, uh, either the note converts to uh, a demand note, which means the lenders can take all your technology, or um, it's unspecified, which means it ends up very confusing. Kind of the obvious thing that ought to happen is it ought to convert to stock at a pre-specified valuation, and that's what the safe does. I mean, that, that's the real difference between a safe and a conventional convertible note, I think. Well, I, th I mean, I know we're flexible in, you know, negotiating a convertible note. And if somebody, we're, we're open to any type of financing situation yeah. that somebody wants to talk well, about. Well, my, my caution to you, and th this is, you know, all investors plug your ears. Uh, my caution to you, the startup company is be real careful about what your convertible note says about what happens if you don't raise that series A by the specified date. Right. You, you know, be right. really careful about that. I mean, if you're not careful, it can turn into a demand note, you know, that's uh, uh, secured by the technology, um, or it could be unspecified, which results in a mess, uh, or it could convert to stock at some valuation you never agreed to, or there's just all kinds of weird things that can happen uh, with the conversion, uh, with a convertible note, if you don't raise a series A by the specified time. And what happens is everybody says, oh, don't worry about it, uh, we'll, we'll get it. Um, but hardly anybody ever does. Right, understood. Yeah, we're, we're open. If, if someone comes in and says, we, they wanna give us the 1.5, we'd do a, you know, a series A. If there's investors wanna put 100,000 in a piece, then you know, we're gonna do probably a convertible note or something. Is that what we're looking at right now? Got it. Other questions? Good presentation. I mean, I think you're on a good uh, a good opportunity. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'll uh, send out the link to the uh, recording for this session. Uh, presenters, uh, keep an eye out for the uh, information for next week uh, with the Orange County Group. Uh, thank you all for attending, unless somebody else has a last minute. Uh, oh, Barbara's reminding me to uh, remind you to go to the invitation that I sent and click on the, uh, the feedback, the Google Forms. Uh, there's one for each of the presenting companies, and, and uh, th those will take you to a Google Form online version of our feedback sheet.